Hey kids, Mr. Fla here, hope you're well. February 2019 has absolutely shot by. Loads been going on in the barking press over that period. If you're interested to find out what the highlights were, stick around and stay tuned. So I must start this month's uh, bike news review with a little bit of an apology because I'm a bit late. I'm recording this on uh, Sunday morning. It's what is it? It's the 3rd of March. So uh, I'm about, uh, well, nearly a week late. Uh, all sorts of things have been going on. I've been off on a cheeky skiing holiday and sort of events have overtaken me. So apologies that it's been a while to get this to you. But I have got uh, five papers to go through, plenty of stories to talk to you about. So you might want to grab a brew. This one might go on for a bit. Uh, I may make it a two-parter again if it goes on too long, but we'll see how it goes. All right then, so without further ado, let's crack on with the news. All right, so to the first story from the first paper then, and it's a little while ago uh, when I marked these up. This is from January the 30th edition, so it's a little bit of a surprise to me. Uh, ah, yes, this one, Panigale V4 Street Fighter. This picture here of this bike that uh, MCN have described as amazing custom shows just how good a naked version of the Gigatti V4 could be. Well, um, I have to say I disagree. <laughs> what do you think of this? I only put this out, I mean, I love custom bikes and I absolutely love the Panigale V4. I think the Panigale, as I've mentioned many times before, is one of the most beautiful bikes ever made, including the current one, which I don't think is quite as nice as the original Panigale, but that's another story. Anyway, what did you make of this? This is from an Italian uh, custom house called uh, Officini GP Design. I probably pronounced that wrong. But they've taken a V4 Panigale and they put on some, uh, you know, they made it into a bruising naked, different light at the front end, girder front end, uh, fancy blingy bits, carbon, all that sort of thing, and come up with a Street Fighter. Uh, it costs £87,000 if you want one, and you have to give them a V4 to start with. So you're looking at, uh, you know, the wrong end of a hundred grand if you want to get one of these bikes. Just wondered what you thought of it. Do you think it's an improvement? Because I personally, I mean, it's, it's quite nice as they go, but I'm not sure it's any nicer looking than the original V4. I think the V4 is a bike that doesn't need meddling around with. Okay, I accept it's not a street fighter, but uh, it is a good looking bike as it is. So uh, I think personally, that's not as good as the original. So I disagree with MCN's headline there saying, amazing custom shows how good a naked version could be. I think it's actually pretty horrible. Anyway, I'd be very interested to see if you agree or whether it's just me. It's just a thing of personal taste. Don't take it too uh, personally if you do love it. Um, but yeah, let me know in the comments, what do you think of the, uh, the V4 Street Fighter? Is that a good move? or is that a bit crud? I think the latter. Anyway, there we go, just in passing. Uh, most, By the way, all this stuff is just my opinion, so don't get too hung up on it. I know I get some uh, pretty heated comments about some of the things I say here. Um, I only mention these things because it's fun to discuss, and I like to have a chat with you about bikes and what's been on the biking news, but I'm no expert. I accept that uh, not everybody agrees with everything I say. But anyway, I digress. So next story I want to pick up here. Capital bike crime continues. Now this is quite an interesting story because uh, we've heard, haven't we, over the last few months how um, the police have been given new powers, particularly the Met, well probably all forces actually, but uh, the Met Police uh, uh, operating in London is where we seem to have the biggest bike crime issue, but it applies across all, um, all cities. But um, So they've been getting new powers and it appears at least that um, they've been tackling bike crime and things have been going in the right direction. Well, somebody put in a freedom of information request to find out, well, exactly how many people have been arrested then um, for all these bike crimes. Now, uh, the freedom of information request went in and it looked at uh, January 2015 to October 2018. And during that period, 45,000 uh, motorcycle or moped thefts were reported to the police, 45,000. And during that period, uh, only 1,200 people were ever charged with an offence. So if you look at the maths, that works out 1,200 people out of 45,000. That's, that's less than 2% of all those bike crimes ended up in, uh, in a conviction. So that's not great, is it? So 98%. Uh, you know, walk scot-free on the surface of it. I'm sure there's more to it than that, but uh, it's interesting, isn't it? When you actually delve into the figures, um, maybe things aren't quite as good as we thought, but uh, but there we go. Anyway, we, we continue to grapple with the whole issue of bike crime and uh, anything we can do to help stop that, raise awareness, partly why I mention it, is a good thing. And we'll talk more uh, later in the review about one of the new things that you can do to help secure your bike against theft. But anyway, okay, so that was that. So a bit depressing news on the bike crime front. Okay, next story I've picked up in this first paper here. All gain and no pain. Uh, and I, I mentioned this one because this is one of these MCN 250 reviews where they put two similar bikes back to back. And here they've chosen the Suzuki GSX-S 1000F, bit of a mouthful, uh, costing 10,299, against the new Kawasaki Z1000 SX, uh, exactly the same price. Um, I, I raise this, number one, I haven't ridden the Suzuki. I'd love to, I think it looks, uh, it looks quite cool, a bit like a bat bike, uh, but a bit odd the styling. You either like it or you don't, I think. I have ridden the Z1000SX, not the absolute latest one, but uh, I'm just really pleased that proper sports touring bikes still exist. This used to be a genre that was uh, very much the four, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago. These were big bikes before we all got into adventure bikes and started buying GSs and things in the numbers that we do now. Uh, and I'm really glad to see this 
this genre coming back. Uh, I haven't got any particular views on which is the best bike out of these two because I haven't ridden the, the Suzuki, as I mentioned, but I really want to. Um, just for the uh, um, sake of argument, let's see what uh, MCN said was the better bike. They've given the Kawasaki four stars out of five and the Suzuki three. Um, I'm not sure on what basis. Uh, let's have a quick look. Basically, I think it's basically saying the GSX S 1000F is a bit too aggressive and tiring, whereas the Z1000SX is a bit more relaxing. So on that basis, if you're going to be doing long miles, then the Kawasaki probably makes more sense if that is the case. But I want to get myself a ride on the on the big Suzuki because it does look unusual. Uh, I think it looks a little bit like the Bat Bike with all its curves. Um, and I do like the GSX-R 1000 very much indeed. I assume the engine is very similar in this, so it'd be a great bike for, maybe I can blag one for a, a little loan in the summer from Suzuki. I'm certainly going to try because that's uh, one of their fleet that I haven't done much about. But anyway, there we go. So glad to see that Sports Tour is back. Um, and long may that continue. Okay, next um, story here. I don't often talk about sports people. I'm not a massive follower of motorcycle sports on TV. I used to be a big MotoGP fan, but once BT Sports brought that up, that kind of killed it for me, unfortunately. Uh, when you're stuck with only access to the highlights, it's kind of, it loses some of its appeal, isn't it? So uh, that's a bit of a shame. Uh, but I do very much love road racing. I've never been to a road race to my greatest shame, and I must get to the TT one year. I thought this was going to be the year, but it's turned out I haven't managed to do it. But anyway, uh, so this here, I, I raise this because this here is Pete Hickman. He's the current lap record holder of the TT. Last year, rode a blistering lap uh, of the island, set a new record. Um, and it's just interesting because I raise this. I was at the uh, London Motorcycle Show um, a couple of weeks back, of which more later. Um, but I happened to see Peter Hickman there. He was on, on a stand selling merchandise. It looked to me, I didn't stop and talk to him, unfortunately. I didn't have a chance. But uh, he was sat there, looks like it was on his own stall, trying to drum up some cash by selling merchandise, which I thought was a little bit sad given how, what a legend this guy is in terms of riding. Uh, and then allied to that, it, may, it reminded me of, um, again, when I was at another bike show, the NEC bike show in November, when that bike show was um, breaking down, people were putting away the stands at the end of the day. I happened to still be at the bike show on the last day when it was being broken down, uh, which was an amazing thing. I digress slightly, but uh, I think the show closed at something like five o'clock. I kid you not, by 20 past five, 50% of that show was already packed away. It was an amazing operation. As soon as it closed, lights went off, trucks came in and the thing was was packed away in a short order but whilst i was there watching this amazing stuff going on i wandered over to talk to some people at the bmw stand and i saw pete hickman there who was wheeling his tt winning bike or i assume it was that it might have been his uh, his race bike his bsb bike but he was basically wheeling it into the back of the van again this is the guy that holds the lap record at the tt he's one of our top riders and he's wheeling his own bike into the back of a, of a van Unbelievable. Uh, can you imagine Valentino Rossi doing that? I think not. Um, so, uh, yeah, so hats off to him. Obviously a down-to-earth guy. Maybe one day I'll get to meet him and have a chat with him. But, uh, yeah, so uh, big thumbs up for Pete Hickman. I'm a huge fan. Good man. Right, moving on. Let's hope he does well in the TT this year. Okay, next uh, and final story I picked up from this first paper. Uh, what's new and has it worked? Rule the streets, it says here. Honda's new CB650R is a middleweight masterstroke. Now, this is... Um, the, if you like, the cut down version of their new sort of, I think they're calling them Neo Caf Racer style bikes. I rode the big version, the um, CB1000R, I assume it's called. Some of these numbers get very confusing. I haven't ridden the smaller bike yet, and a lot of people have asked me when am I going to ride it. Well, uh, I'm pleased to say I am talking to Honda and I am talking to dealers. I will get to ride it at some point in the summer. Really looking forward to this because I think the 650 uh, engine size kind of hits the sweet spot for, uh, for real. Um, world road riding and I th also think this looks amazing it looks beautiful it's a four-cylinder bike I'm always impressed by four-cylinder bikes because I don't own one myself whenever I ride one they just seem so silky smooth I don't know why I don't own one so I want to have a go on this the fit and finish looks superb typical Honda build quality which is amazing and the other thing allied with this is it comes in at £6,999 so £7,000 but uh, I think for seven grand on the surface of it without having ridden it that's an awful lot of motorbikes so really looking forward to uh, having a crack on that as soon as I can. So there we go I think uh, that's all I've got to say on the first paper. Um, yeah all right let's move on to the next one. Okay so to the next paper uh, to bring you some top stories from. First uh, story I've picked out here UK bid to improve helmets is the story uh, right at the front of the paper here. Now this is the Transport Research Laboratories they've been doing a study on um, bikers and their helmets and they found out that 25% uh, 
uh, of bikers are wearing the wrong size helmet for them. And uh, it's often said, included by myself, that the most important thing with a helmet is not necessarily it's, um, you know, what star rating it gets in the sharp tests or whatever else, or how expensive it is, but how it fits. You've got to have a helmet that fits properly. It's got to be tight, you know, you've got to have the old hamster cheek thing going on. Uh, and if it starts to get loose over time, maybe get it refurbed or buy another helmet. And uh, I'm, gonna, I'm thinking about making a video on this very subject soon, actually, for maybe newer riders. But 25% uh, wearing the wrong size lid, which means it's not going to be optimally um, protective in the instance of a crash. So what the Transport Research Laboratory are doing is using new uh, 3D scanning and printing techniques to actually scan uh, loads, of, loads of people, actually. I can't remember how many people they're doing, but a, a big sample of bikers' heads to get a better shape that they can then come up with kind of a, a model that the industry can use to actually use to get better helmet fitment. So thumbs up for that, that's gotta be, that's gotta be a good thing. So um, there we go, I don't know how the TRL are actually gonna get the, bike, the helmet manufacturers to take up their new fit, but uh, it's interesting that this research has been done and it's interesting that um, you know, 25% of us are wearing the wrong size helmet. So uh, there we go, make sure you've got a good tight fit is all I say. All right, next story here. What have we got? Again, it's a while, but ah, massive news here. The Daytona is back uh, according to MCN now. Of course, you'll know that uh, Triumph have won last year, or the year before, they won the rights to uh, supply the engines for the Moto2 uh, race series. Starting this year, they've basically got a, um, an upgraded, revamped version of their 765cc engine out of the Street Triple, uh, powering Moto2, which is going to be an amazing thing to see. So that's happening this year. Um, and because of that, lots of people said, well, does this mean that the Daytona is coming back, Triumph's uh, middleweight sports bike? Well, it appears it probably is, because these spy shots have now been taken of what looks like a brand new Triumph Daytona with a 765cc engine, probably out the street triple, maybe tuned differently. Now the big differences here, that, uh, or the things that uh, MCN have spotted, are that it's got uh, Olin's um, suspension, which uh, I think the old Daytona had, but that's, that's nice to see. It's got a full TFT dash on it, which of course we haven't seen on a Daytona before. Uh, it's got a Moto2 style side mount and exhaust, and um, they're thinking that it's gonna come out in two specs, probably an R or and an SE um, spec. So no news on when we might see this in the shop. So, well, I think MCN are estimating 2019, a uh, back end of as maybe a release perhaps at Motorcycle Live, who knows. Um, but really, really great news. I mean, I, I love Triumph, as I've mentioned before. I, I think everybody should own a Triumph. I'm proud that it's a British brand. I love to have a Triumph in my garage. Um, and I love the Triumph retros, but they, they seem to be knocking out retros at a huge rate. They've done retros. Um, where I think Triumph could really score now is to get some proper modern bikes back in the range. They've got a few, of course, um, like the Speed Triple, Street Triple, etc. But a sports bike would be a great thing. Wouldn't it be even better if we saw a 1,000cc sports bike? I think that'd be amazing. But given they've got this engine there now, coming back with a 765 Daytona makes an awful lot of sense. Now, when I spoke to the marketing people at Triumph uh, about a year ago, when I said, you know, are you going to build us a new Daytona? Um, they wouldn't uh, say yes or no, but they, their basic argument was that uh, they could only build a bike that people would buy. Uh, and they'd done research on the, on the Yamaha R R6, um, which is a comparable sort of super sports bike. Uh, and at that time, the, the, the new R6 has only sold about, I don't know, a couple of hundred units in the country every year. And Trump said on the back of that, they couldn't really justify coming up with a new model. But I think maybe now they're realizing that demand is such that it is worth getting one out there. So if they release it, go out and buy it. And that way, uh, we'll maybe see some more new bikes from Triumph. Only slight disappointment I have with this is to do with the styling, in that this looks to me exactly like the old Daytona. It would have been nice if that had been updated a bit, but more on that a bit later. Okay, next story. So that's, that's for me, that's huge news as a, as a Triumph fan. Uh, okay, oh, just want to <laughs> mention that uh, Blog Off is back. For those of you that didn't know, look, here we go. Blog Off, this little article in MCN. Uh, once every four weeks, I write a little column for MCN called Blog Off. There are four of us that do it and we rotate on a four weekly basis. Uh, don't know if you knew that I did that, but uh, I'm very proud that uh, MCN let me do that. It's something that they asked me to do way after I started doing these bike reviews. I don't have any particular tie up with MCN. Uh, they do pay me to do that, by the way, a small amount, I might add. Uh, but I just love the fact that, that, that I can do that. So uh, if you do buy MCN, do look out for the uh, for the blog off articles in there. Um, and I'm glad to see that back because it, uh, it sort of died a death over the Christmas New Year period when MCN does some slightly different things because their guys are obviously off, off on leave as well. And blog off sadly disappeared for a month. But anyway, it's back now. So check that out if you haven't seen it already. It's, uh, one good reason to get a subscription to MCN. And uh, by the way, MCN, would you like to give me a free subscription? No, I just thought I'd throw that in there. I do pay for my copies of MCN, even though I do write that little article and I do this review. Uh, anyway, next up, another one of these MCN 250 reviews. This time, a couple of adventure bikes. They've pitted the uh, Honda CRF 
Africa Twin Adventure Sports against the BMW 850GS Adventure Rally. Price-wise, they're both very similar prices. The, uh, the uh, Honda comes in about 500 quid, 700 quid, more expensive uh, than the GS. But the reason I mention this is because I think these sorts of bikes now hit the sweet spot in terms of real-world riding and pricing. These bikes, I love them both by the way, I've ridden both these bikes, I think they're both amazing. The Africa Twin for me at 5 foot 8, a little bit tall in its adventure sports guys, so that would possibly put me off, but it rode beautifully. And I remember when I did the review for that, I'll stick a link up uh, here somewhere, if I can find it, that I said that I thought there was no reason to buy things like a 1200cc big GS when things like that are on the market, because to me it rode very, very similarly indeed. But people have asked me, now having ridden the F850GS, uh, which will I go for out of the two? Well, I, I would actually go for the BMW. Um, it is a little bit cheaper. Um, not saying that because I'm a BMW fanboy. I know people think that because I ride a GS1200. Uh, I do like the GS, obviously. But I found when I rode this, this was just like, it felt still exactly like a GS to ride. It had all the same features and functions, the lovely TFT that it has. Um, it rode really smoothly, the engine's a peach, um, and it goes really, really well. I mean, I'm a, again, I'm not a sporty rider, I'm not a particularly skilled rider. I don't necessarily, I'm unable to tell the difference between some of the subtleties between bikes, but uh, if you'd blindfolded me and stuck me on that GS, uh, I wouldn't have said it was any lesser bike than the 1200, I have to say. It's a, it's a lovely machine, as is the Africa Sports, I mean, uh, Africa Twin, sorry, Adventure Sports. If you're a taller person, maybe go for the Africa Twin, but either bike you wouldn't be disappointed with. Let me just see what uh, MCN concludes included uh, out of the two. Here we go, in fact they gave them both four stars uh, and the little conclusion was, uh, actually just quickly reading this here, um, in fact they've, they've basically concluded both bikes exactly like they just said are, are good, it's just the, uh, the Honda's a bit taller if you're a taller person which is exactly my conclusion as well. Um, but again if it was my money I was spending I would go for the BMW just because I think that the TFT on that now is is, an, is the best TFT I've seen of any bike I've ridden. Um, and when you look at the comparable Honda uh, dash, it just it's not quite up there in terms of uh, premium quality feel. Okay, uh, next and final story in this paper. How are we doing for time? Uh, looks like we've been going on for nearly 20 minutes, so uh, we've got three papers to go, so I may well make this a two-parter. Uh, the next part I'll put up very soon, either straight after this video, and I'll put a link to it, or... Um, or I'll put it up in a, in a day or two's time. But we'll do some parish notices at the end of the uh, second part, and I'll tell you a bit about what's coming up on the Missenden fly. Anyway, uh, so to the final story here, playful new cub. Um, I just wondered what you thought of the new Honda cub. It's been announced that they were gonna, Honda were going to produce the new cub uh, for a while. As you probably know, the, the, the original Honda cub is the world's most ubiquitous powered vehicle. I can't remember what the numbers are. I think it's something like... 8 million made, or it might even be 80 million made. It's some stupid number over the period of time that the, that the Cub was built. And I think the original version is still being built somewhere. But anyway, they've come out with this new version now. Uh, it'll cost you, if you want one, 3,399. It's a 125cc machine. So not, um, not super cheap for a 125, but it is a, an iconic machine. And I think they've done quite a nice job with the update in that, uh, a bit like um, BMW did with the Mini, it's still recognisably a Cub, but it does have some sort of modern touches, things like LED lights and disc brakes and all that sort of thing. So they've definitely brought it up to date. Everybody that I've, or all the reviews I've written of it, people have liked it. But I just pose the question, and I wonder if you stick the answer in the comments, who is gonna buy these bikes? If you're just getting into motorcycles, I think maybe you might, well personally I'd probably buy something that looked a bit more like a motorbike. Um, I'm just not sure what the market is for these. There, there may be a market elsewhere outside of Europe, or, or outside of the UK rather, um, for maybe people that aren't enthusiasts about motorcycling, but uh, I'm not sure if I had 3,399 to spend on a 125 whether I would personally would go for one. Um, I stand to be corrected, I've yet to ride one. I would like to have a go on one, I must admit, to, to see what they're like. And the pictures here, the, quality, the build quality looks amazing. Um, so we'll see. But I just wondered who's going to buy these. Are you going to buy one? We'll, we'll find out. All right, that's it for the, uh, for the second paper then. Three more to go through. Uh, I think I've been on here, according to the camera's timer at least, for about uh, 20 minutes. So uh, I'll tell you what I'll do. We'll call this end of part one, um, and uh, I'll, uh, I'll edit this up. I'll get it posted as quick as I can, hopefully today, Sunday, so you can see this. And then either directly after this, if I've got time to do so, uh, you'll see the second part, or in a day or two's time, look out for the second part, it'll be coming. So, uh, all right, that's it for part one. Uh, I'll speak to you in part two, and I'll stick a link up here to part two as well, as soon as it's available. All right, speak to you soon.